So it's funny how the government side comes up and say, you know, they're trying to, the whole burden of this is to prove how China is actually a threat. But what we have this question about the incentives, right, and have the capability of China to do so, is say, well, that's not what the debate is about. Terror provision is this what the debate is about. Because every country in the world has the has uh, capability to, to become a threat to the United States. In countries like Israel and Russia, they're currently doing a lot of trade with the United States. The whole world has the potential to put the United States in burden under your logic. So we say, in order for it to be a threat, you, as a government side, need to show us that there, number one, is a link, and number two, there is a motive and incentive for the United States to do so. Otherwise, your thing is nothing throughout the first, and second, and third speaker. Countries like China, North Korea, Iran, and Russia, and yet they all have nuclear war or has any in the United States. Japan has a great United States. Uh, Japan has a, has a great economy. Middle East, well, I'm very sure of like, but according to your logic, they're Middle Eastern. And as we say, Thailand, every country in the world has the capability to do so. So the only way for you to justify that they are actually a threat at the end of the day is to prove to us that the United States has a high incentive to do something that would threaten China at the end of the day. Otherwise, we say, your case is nothing. We don't need an economic lessons of how China is moving under the status. We know that. We're the research, we did the research, but you need to show us that directly. And that's the proof of today's debate. Given that as a justification, let me go on to my analysis. I'm going to talk about three things. Firstly, on the economic basis, and then secondly, on the political basis. Firstly, on the economic, divided into five main other points. First thing is this. They don't want to talk about, all right, you know what, perhaps uh, the United States can actually rely on China. China, you're more of taking advantage of China's cheap labor. They say, look, they said this, all right, for every one dollar invested in China, the United States actually invests more, like six dollars back or whatever it is. They say, yeah, it's all because Chinese China has cheap labor. So this is the advantage of these cheap labor. Do you have No. Okay, so Okay. So they say, look, because China has such a cheap labor, the United States take advantage of China of these cheap labor and sell to the rest of the countries in the world. You don't think China is necessary to right. Look, if China doesn't say, no, we're not going to do it anymore, first thing you have to show us the sense for China to do that, given the fact that there's a lot of trade going on between the United States and China, and how China is actually designed by the United States in terms of trade and economic life. No one says this is down. But secondly, even with that debate, we say, the United States is certainly switched to other countries such as Vietnam and most of the countries in Southeast Asia, Taiwan. We say it's not a monopoly case. They're not really designed on China the other day. We say you're getting support. So then, then okay, moving on to the second point, you talk about how, oh, currently there are 140,000 jobs in the United States. Yeah, that happens everywhere around the world. Chinese immigrants, they let us flood the world. We know that. But we say, look, you need to get into the world. What kind of thing are you actually talking about? Are you talking about high wage jobs or are you talking about low wage students' jobs? If you're talking about low wage students' jobs, then there is no debate because they're putting that in the world anyway. And under the staff rule, the United States is not really concerned with the lower jobs, given the fact that during the staff rule, they're taking advantage of Chinese labor offshore, not in their country. Then if you want to talk about high wage jobs, you say, that's what further confidence you take. It just means that here, the United States is taking advantage of Chinese skilled black labor. These skilled labor, they don't work in China anymore. They come and work in the United States. We don't see how that is correct. Matter of fact, we think that's an opportunity. No. So do you say that the other uh, countries take advantage of the lower class work in China? Yes, that's what the problem is. It's not going to the US. That's why they use 140,000 jobs a year. What? <laughs> no. Currently, these Chinese immigrants, it's not like they come in and then the people suddenly go, oh, I'm not going to have, I don't, I, I, I'm not going to hire my own American citizens, I'm going to hire you instead. You need to further prove that just by simply giving an example of the choice is not going to work. Furthermore, I point out to you how you're getting a contradiction because if you're talking about skilled labor, then, then that means that China is not the leading intellectual, uh, intellectual technology because all of these labor and skilled labor are moving towards the United States. I think that's a fundamental flaw in their case. Moving down to the third point. Now, you know, you can all talk about how counterfeit products is actually a threat. This is really unfair for them to bring up the whole point of counterfeit products because China, again, no less than it. Okay, you right? Okay, but we say, okay, you know what I mean. So we say, this thing has been moving on, this thing has been going on forever. In most of the Asian countries, there are economic products. But what they need to prove to us is that that is actually a threat to the United States. First, currently, under the national, given the existence of the 
your products. You say that companies like Microsoft, Apple, you know, you just, you're still selling to the rest of the world. It's not like China, uh, uh, the United States and China is like my only market. China has a hundred dollars a million dollars. You're saying that's not necessarily the case. And if all of us are like the law on camera, you really need to take into consideration that these products, whether or not consumers rely on these fake products, we can choose a good iPod or a fake iPod to say that's a very, very hard food. All of that is more than the proof that they are actually of threat. Not mentioning they never gave us incentive. Go to the plot, sit down. We say, we move on to the four points. They can want to talk about, oh, uh, how China is like a, a threat because they produce like poisonous products and pet products and all that. We say, firstly, uh, this goes on everywhere else in the world, and even if you just want to talk about China, every time there has been these kind of products, it's immediately being stopped by the United States. So we don't necessarily think how, we don't necessarily see the link of how that contributes to a threat. Because we say, on the other hand, that's even better. Because now that you prove that people don't really trust Chinese products, most of the Western companies are coming in and keep on choosing Western products. Uh, in advantage of that, you're going to use Western products more than Chinese products because under your logic, they don't really trust Chinese products. Okay, thank you for moving our case. We don't see how that is a threat at the end of the day. Finally, down to my fifth point on the economic point. Because we don't talk about this. Oh, uh, how is how everybody is actually converting their service to the EU? You say, okay, that's good. So, we say, what does that have to do with today's debate in terms of like, Chinese actually being a political threat? Because we say, if you really want to prove that China is a threat, then the proof of how everybody is switching their currency to Europe, not the EU. We don't raise the speaking value based on that particular point. Compared to my second main point, talking about political, if you want to talk about the human rights, how China is actually supporting Venezuela, Sudan, Zimbabwe, all these countries going against the United States, we say, yeah, but just because they're supporting them, we say they're supporting them because of their cheap goods, because of their oil. And in countries where they are actually allied to the United States, those oils are not cheap. And we say the only incentive for China to come in is actually to gain money. And our only second or first week actually conceded that point. So we say that's a fundamental fault for the uh, government of Because they need to prove that China is actually currently persuading these nations to arm against the United States. And these nations, all the nations that they mentioned, actually have the most to do so. Then we say it's a threat. How do that? We say no. Finally, that's what about military and you know, all this whole thing about B10 and all that. We say, so what if you're building their own weapon? What if you don't want them to build weapons or something? We say just because you're building weapons doesn't necessarily mean that you're using it against the United States. That is further again the burden of the from the government side of the house. So what am I supposed to be young today? They came up with how about they came up with talk about they were the economic lessons of how China is a threat and all. We say, no, so it's me, so it's the system.